Hi gamers, welcome. Another video from Lords of the Fallen, this time of more educational nature. So I have been looking through the various different videos about tips for the beginners and overall this type of content, basically educational stuff, yeah? And I really quickly realized that people do not really teach you what is actually important about this game. Something that would legitimately help you in the long run. So instead of stupid gimmicks, I will teach you about fundamentals. For the sake of to create decent build, you need to understand how to optimize your stats. And for that, it's worth to know the soft caps. Soft cap is certain threshold in the attributes that apply diminishing returns on further improvement of that attribute. So, let's say that I am currently level up vitality to 20. I was getting something like 20, 21 points per every level up. And then from 20 onwards, I will be getting only 15 and that continues to 40. And then since 40, I'm going to be getting only 10. Based on these diminishing returns, certain stats are not worth of improving anymore in comparison to others. In case of vitality, which is responsible for your amount of the HP, 20 is the first soft cap. Then we are going for 40, which is another one. And then the last soft cap is 60. From now on, we're gonna be getting around 5 points per point, all the way up to 99, and 99 is a hard cap. For Endurance, it's going to be 40, up to the 40 for the stamina increase and also the weight increase, you are going to receive like very good returns. Then after 40, up to the 60, 60 is under soft cap, we are going to receive less stamina, so soft caps for the endurance or more like stamina itself is 40 and 60 and the weight is 40. Rest of the stats that is strength, agility, radiance and inferno are essentially offensive stats. And these have soft caps of 50 and 75. What's worth to mention below the stamina bar you see my mana bar, but if I'm going to unequip the catalyst over here it swaps into actually ammunition bar length of this bar is dependent on your attributes to be exact the ammunition bar is dependent on the endurance and vitality whereas your mana bar is actually dependent on your inferno and radiance after example from elden ring i actually beg you level up your hp Look at the example of these two weapons. One is upgraded to plus two, another one is default without any upgrades. The one that is upgraded to plus two has better scaling on the Inferno and Agility. And essentially that means at the beginning of the game there is no point to increase your offensive stats because you are not getting the returns out of it. That's why at the beginning of the game, it's better to focus on defensive stats like endurance or vitality, like especially vitality, because it is something that provides you with better survivability. Whereas your offensive attributes, you rather want to level up only for the sake of to handle certain weapons. Let's say that you want to use this weapon over here and uh, the requirement for that is 28 strength then yeah go for that 28 strength don't go further there is no point level up other stats wait until you will have upgrades for that weapon for the sake of so you are actually going to benefit out of more strength there is one exception from this rule please look at the damage that we are going to do with the fist weapon over here 74 now I'm gonna unequip the weapon and the damage that we dealt is 109. Basically, fists are very usable in Lords of the Fallen. It is maybe even the best weapon in the early game. So using the fists in the early game is like using, let's say, fist weapon with the upgrade of plus four, plus five. And therefore, you can actually level up strength from the get-go for the sake of to do more damage, because fists actually scale with strength. In such case, technically, leveling up strength instead of vitality makes sense until you are just doing the challenge run with the fists only, 
then it is still of course better to use regular weapons because these outscale fists a lot by the fact that they can be upgraded, they can use runes, they have status effects and so on and so forth. But yeah, if you want to do funny drop kicks, then you absolutely can level up strength at the beginning of the game for the sake of to do more damage. Another thing that we have to talk about is poise. Basically, you do not have poise displayed anywhere here on the armor stats, but the poise system actually does exist in this game and is tied to the weight of your armors or armor pieces if you prefer. Your poise is adaptive with the hyper armor so let's say we're gonna say hello to this guy. Eh, come on wake up. When we are going to get hit by a powerful attack like this uh, your opponent essentially is going to break you quite easily yeah but when we are using the weapon that has hyper armor and we are going to attack on the active hyper armor frames, as you can see, we are not going to get staggered. What is important to remember it is hyper armor, something that is adaptive, and because of that you need to have enough of your regular poise for the sake of so hyper armor actually has an effect. When it comes to weapons that have hyper armor effect, one of them are grand axes, grand hammers are another one, grand swords also have hyper armor, and if I recall correctly that will be about it, the other classes do not seem to have any hyper armor at all, but I know for the fact that there were some discussions to put some hyper armor on the long swords, which in souls games it is essentially equivalent of the great swords, so keep in mind that future patches might actually change some things in relation to the hyper armor. The last thing I want to mention on are the mobs. You see these grey guys over here? They actually indicate you that you're supposed to use a lamp in this location. You can even see the additional animation on the lamp itself when you are nearby these. By using lamp you can see that there is some sort of the platform in the other world and you just want to go in there. It's rather kind of basic thing, but I really have seen a lot of people not realizing that. Moths appear in the world of Lords of the Fallen in different colors. Or for example, these ones over here indicates to you that there is a memory in this place. So yeah, you can go again to the Umbrel and then just see what the memory is about. Practically every new location going to have some sort of the map on the ground. So you can actually see this in your journals and these essentially give you the general point of interest in particular locations. That's supposed to tell you where you have to go for the sake of to get to the another location. Just watching all these streamers like Asmongold and others that just literally cannot manage to beat certain puzzle that is honestly very simple to beat because they do not see these straight to the face clues or not using mechanics that this game provide that were not available in the other souls is hella freaking ridiculous please use them and yeah that will be about it when it comes to today's video i have so many different topics that i could touch on but honestly just let me know if you enjoy this type of videos, if you are going to like this one, maybe we are going to do more, because why not? Meanwhile, thank you a lot for watching, I will see you in another one. Bye! Memory's broken, Zoom goes unspoken! Hey.